Hey everybody, it's 3D Printing Professor, and you know what? It's been a heck of a past couple of days with everybody having something to say about uh, Creality, the CR10S, and you know what? I got something to say as well, so let's jump into that as I unbox the Creality CR10S. <music> You know, before I get into current events, I want to uh, share a little story with you guys. Uh, it's a story I've kind of told before. It's about MakerBot, and I'll put boop video right there in the cards so that you guys can watch that afterwards. But the short version goes like this. Once upon a time, there was this company called MakerBot, and they were the premier name in 3D printers, and not just 3D printers, they were the premier name in open source. They would develop based on the RepRap software, but then they would share it with the community and their designs were out there. That enabled them to more or less skip having a research and development department and still be, ooh, still be a successful company. Um, it was a great business model and it got them a lot of notoriety and respect and eventually investments. And those investments, it's kind of ironic what happened to MakerBot, if you already know the story. Those investments said, all right, so what's your business plan here? And MakerBot said, well, we're making open source software available to the public, or open source hardware even, op available to the public. And uh, their investors said, huh? You mean that people in China might just steal this? And they said, oh, yeah, no, that's already happening, like, all the time. But, you know, it doesn't matter. We're staying ahead of the curve because people are helping us develop it, and we're putting out the latest and greatest, and China's, like, two weeks behind the curve. And the investor, investor said, yeah, you got to stop doing that. And so MakerBot did. They went closed source, and their business tanked. The, the money that came in to help them be successful decided that they shouldn't be successful anymore by, you know, just telling them to stop doing the business plan that had been working for them up to that point. Funny, isn't it? That's the first story I want to tell. The second story I want to tell is about a conversation I had with a 3D printer manufacturer that you might know, so I'll, I'll keep their name quiet. But uh, they were producing a 3D printer that was very much a derivative of the Replicator 1 uh, 3D printer or Replicator 2. It was a Replicator bot, you know, thing. It was Mighty Board, SVG files, digital um, G code and stuff like that. It definitely wasn't, you know, it was clearly same build size, cantilevered shelf. And so I, I contacted them about it and I said, oh, hey, I, can, I recognize that, that this is uh, a derivative of the Replicator series, what changes have you made to it? And their response to me was, oh no, this is our original design from scratch. Huh, from scratch you say? From scratch you invented the exact same file format? That is amazing. It wasn't from scratch. But the mentality of these people that we're dealing with is that if they made it, it's from scratch, and we, you know, they can't admit that they're standing on the shoulders of giants because they've already established that they just think that they're really, really tall. And at this point, they would have to admit to a lie, to cover up a lie, to cover up a lie, and I don't think their pride could take that hit, and so it's best not to bring it up. So why do I bring this up? Well, right now... Uh, a lot of people are getting up in arms about the fact that Creality is not releasing open source their derivative on Marlin. And what's really cool is Creality's actually listening to us. They heard us. They have released a video saying why they can't do it. And mind you, their reason for why they can't do it is flimsy, but 
they're listening to us. And that, that to me is remarkable. That to me is outside of what I expected from them. I expected them to be like this man, this, this 3D printer manufacturer who said, oh no, we made it from scratch. They're not, they're admitting that what they have is built on open source technology, but that they don't feel like they can open source it. They're hearing us, guys. That makes Creality actually a cut above. Now, the other problem with this is every, every single one of these 3D printer manufacturers from China are building on open source hardware. And they're iterating that hardware, and they're not releasing their iterations out there. And yet, nobody's complaining about JG Aurora, or Gitek, or TiVo, or all these people who are iterating other people's designs. And why aren't we complaining about them? Why are, why the big focus on Creality right now? Well, it's simple. Because the change that Creality made in this CR10, we want. And because we want it, we're going, ah, Creality, well, da, 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 da. you should be boycotting all of these printers. And if you decide that you want to boycott all of these 3D printers, there will be no options left for people who cannot afford a high-end United States or UK-made 3D printer. Listen, if you want to support companies who are not in GPL violation, then go buy a Lulzbot, or go buy an Ultimaker, or go buy an XYZ printing machine. They're technically not in GPL violation because they develop their stuff from scratch. They have a research and development department, so they don't have to release it for free. Now, Lulzbot is actually maintaining their open source, and so, hey, good on them. Also, Prusa. If you want to support open source, go Prusa. But if you can't afford any of those options, I still want you to get into 3D printing. I still want you to make cool stuff. And so I am not willing to say that you should boycott Creality because that means that you would have to boycott all of them. And that means that you can't get into 3D printing if you can't afford it. And that's not a position I'm willing to take. <sighs> now, mind you, I still feel that open source is a viable business option. MakerBot made it work until they stopped making it work. And when they did, they went downhill. Once they stopped being open source, they were shut down. Ugh. Before Creality released their statement about why they felt they couldn't open source their hardware, I was of the opinion based on the experience that I shared at the beginning of this video, that no Chinese company would ever be able to go open source, that they just lacked some crucial aspect of the mentality that would allow them to do that. And yet, <laughs> Creality's listening to us. And as such, I feel like there might actually be hope. Creality might be the one that might be able to actually follow in MakerBot's footsteps back when they were a powerhouse and actually go open source. And that would thrill me no end. And I think that it would thrill you as well. And so, listen, the fact of the matter is, I, I, when I started this video, I, when I planned this video, Creality had not made their statement and they just released it and I watched it and I went, wow. The tone of this video was originally going to be, this is a fight we can't win. There's no way we can change these people's minds, and all that a boycott is going to do is hurt us and possibly even hurt them. And in fact, I'm still a little bit concerned about hurting Creality, because if their eventual response to this is to go close source, like MakerBot did, then we will lose a great resource, a great people who, it seems, are on our side. So, I think while my tone is different in this video, my end message is still the same. Let's relax for a little bit. Let's take a step back. Let's take a breather, guys. I realize that this is a hot button item for a lot of people, that it's upset a lot of people. I realize that Creality's statement did not satisfy 
uh, a lot of people. But let them have it. They listened to us. They responded. That is monumental. That is amazing. And if we scare them away, and if we make them sorry that they've done that, we will lose something great. Creality, I support you. I love your printers. I love that I know that I'm going to put this together, and once it's all together, I'm going to hit go on it and get my first print out of it today. I know that that's going to happen because it's happened before with your printers, and I trust that it will happen again. You guys are great. You guys deserve more respect than you're getting these past couple of days. Guys, back off Creality a little bit. They're doing their best. They are the good guys in this conversation, and I'm willing to back them up on it. I recognize that we want what they have, that we want the really cool changes that they've made to this firmware, and they don't feel like they can give it to us. Respect that. Okay? Don't push them. If we can, we'll get it in the future. Yes, they, they want to release a firmware to us that is incomplete and, and one that need some work. So work on it, guys. Show them that if they open up, we will repay them in more than kind, that we will make their lives better and easier, that we will be their research and development. And they might look at it and go, yeah, but if we release it, our neighbors are going to steal that design and do it for cheaper. But yeah, you'll be on the cutting edge because we will release the next iteration for you and get it out there. Show them that they can help, that they can stand with us. All right, I've got it mostly together. I think I've got the filament out detection sensor where it belongs, although I'm not quite sure about that. And I'm not entirely happy with the fact that the CR-10S still has that feed tube being way too close to that Z-axis. I hope that this being where it is will drive it in, but there's no tube running between them. Come on, can I have a little... Can I have a little tube to keep that away from the Z-axis so it doesn't scrape against it? Ah, well, I think this is correct. There's nothing in the instructions about where to mount this filament out detector, but I found the electronics for it. I found the filament out detector. I think this is where it goes. Seems to fit on there. I will go look at the instructions and see if I can figure that out. I also really, really messed up putting the build tape on here, uh, the tape on the build plate. It's... Uh, Ugh, ugly. So uh, do not look too closely at the tape. But overall, I think I'm going to mount it this direction this time because of the filament out sensor. But overall, yeah, CR10 went together real fast. But it's getting late. I think I'm going to save the first time print for tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how that goes then. But I guess my point in this whole discussion is, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. If, if you feel that boycotting creality is important then fine but i feel like if you boycott creality you gotta boycott all of them because they are all out of it and if you're just getting you know upset because creality has something that you want then just admit it that this isn't about you know creality doing anything that they shouldn't but the fact that 
they got something that you want and just just say so just admit that um but overall like i said i'm i was really impressed that creality was listening to us they heard us and they responded and it might not have been the response that we wanted but they heard us guys do you not realize how amazing that is and i feel like they deserve a lot of kudos and respect for that but anyways i've said my piece on this i i hope that you guys might have something to say and if you do go ahead and throw it in the comment section i'd love to hear from you in fact i'd love to hear i i loved to hear from the people in the comments on my previous videos who helped me kind of get these thoughts in order so that i could present them to you in a little bit more organized fashion sometimes i just go off the cuff and i say stupid things and i might have said a stupid thing today and if if i said a stupid thing and you disagree with what i said let me know in the comments and if i have more to say i will have a link to the blog in the comment section so you can click on that and check out anything else that i have to say but i think this video is going to go out pretty fast because this is this is a hot item i want to thank you guys for voting to have me open the cr10s and that that was kind of the uh um you know you kind of forced my hand and talk I, I didn't want to talk about this subject i'm i'm of the opinion that i, I will just sit back and let this happen but you guys in the comments made uh, wanted me to do it and then you guys voted for me to open up this printer first, so here we go. Uh, I'm doing exactly what you guys asked for, and just so happens that it's a heck of a time for it. But I appreciate you guys. I, I, this is your channel, and I hope that I can make it good for you. But I want to thank you very much for watching. There we go. I want to remind you guys... First of all, I want to thank my Patreon backers. Your support is more needed than ever. And that reminds me, uh, Joel Telling made an excellent point that, hey, if open source is really that important to you and you want to support it, Marlin's got a Patreon page. So go ahead and support it there. I think that's a fantastic idea. And, and absolutely, I'd also like your support too. But, you know, either way, um, Absolutely. If you if you feel that strongly about it, then support Marlin so that they can continue to do the development. And maybe maybe make these features that we want to see in Marlin happen uh, by themselves. But as always, I want to thank you very much for watching. If I haven't said that already, and remind you, safety first. See you next time. I lied. I started printing tonight. I just I don't know, like kid on Christmas, you know. And look at it. First print, level to uh, build uh, print bed, and despite the fact that I really messed up on the tape, uh, it's printing just fine. Uh, and to the people who responded on my TiVo about me overreacting about the wiggle in the TiVo plate, there's no wiggle on this plate. It came from the manufacturer ready to go. I haven't had to tighten any bolts. However, I do have to admit that the screws that were holding the Z-axis screws, both of them, were so loose that my z-axis i was trying to figure out how come it's not going up and then when i lifted up the z-axis it lifted those screws right out and so i had to put those in and tighten those down and i would say that that was not standard and that was messed up so okay it's not perfect uh it's not perfect in a lot of ways but so far it's doing okay okay we're gonna let this print run we'll see how it turns out and uh then we'll test the filament out and see what happens on the next print um, I'm excited. This is working. It's looking pretty good. We'll also try the power out and things like that, but I'm going to let this print go. I want to have at least one successful print before I try to break it. So, so far, CR10S first print looking good. Next video, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Do you want to know more about 3D printing, but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer, but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here now for you. Buy it on Amazon.